Okay, we're here with Bo James today, NewTechLures.com, demonstrating the new jig and the new technology behind this product. Well, what I'm gonna we've discussed out on the water some some of the technology of this thing, but this is a visual demonstration. You know, it's always a visual demonstration is worth a thousand words. The old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. When I started this years ago, I knew I had to have some way to see what was actually going on from a mechanical aspect once you set the hook on a fish. So I came up with this hook testing device here. And what it's going to demonstrate to you is not that you can't hook a fish with the traditional jig. I've caught thousands of fish on them myself. But I've also lost a lot of fish that I felt that I should have caught and, and uh, I actually saw happen a long time ago the uh, bass swallowed my jig right up by the boat and I set the hook and it came by me like a rocket with the bass's mouth shut so it popped out of his mouth with the hook flat and never even touched him and that kept eating in the back of my mind and I thought yeah, the more I thought about it the more I realized that the more often it happens in the bigger the, the irony of this whole thing is the bigger the bass is the more that it does happen so this being the mouth of the fish here's a one you know I've got several different styles so you can see that they all have the same problem and you'll see that some of them the head is even a problem as you watch this hook or this come through here you know if it worked like it should it should roll up there and hook around that dowel but see how flat it stays and I'll even put it up here to try to see it this the weed guard fights it over to the side and it's it's the property of physics a single angle plane when you compress it from two sides as you start compressing it it becomes unstable and it'll travel in a spiral well this single the center based weed guards doing the same thing as you compress it it fights the hook over to the side here's more of a arky style head and we'll pull it through there see it flip to the side now it might have hooked a little bit you saw it kind of grab there but you can see the shallow penetration angle so all these traditional jigs, basically the way they hook is if a bass has it in his mouth and he's clamped down on it tight, he's got these cheek muscles working, pushing his tongue up against the roof of his mouth, that as you set the hook, it'll drag along and deflect the weed guard enough that the hook point catches. But look at the, you can see the weed guards fighting the hook to the side. So what happens, that shallow penetration angle is susceptible to tearing out. But if it's buried straight up to the full pull onto the hook, well then it's, it won't tear out. But you know, that shallow penetration angle, or uh, you know, if the bass is not completely clamped down on it with his tongue, then you're susceptible to hitting the lips and then doing that hook comes out flat. Either that or it just grabs a little piece of the lip. That's what happens. So here's some other style jigs to show you that they all have that same problem. Here's a different style and you can see the weed guard, same thing, pushes it to the side. Here's another style, same thing. And, and so it's just an inherent problem. Here's a popular uh, finesse jig that everybody likes and see they all have the same problem so if you look at a new jig the first thing you'll see are these iconic flat surfaces on the front of the head these flat eye like surfaces and also the iconic looking dual appendage antennas that are on separate points if you see either one of those features you know that it's a, a new jig in its newer technology. What this does, these flat surfaces are put on there for a purpose. They're actually camming surfaces so that anytime this jig is pulled through two parallel lines, it's going to rotate to vertical. And then by the weed guard being on two separate points, instead of it fighting the hook over the side, it locks the hook in the vertical position. 
So that same fish that we've been barely hooking or even missing, we just hooked him right through the top of the head. It does that every time. You can see the camming surfaces immediately turn the Rot head. Rotate the vertical. Rotates it vertical. Bam. You just hooked him right through the top of the head. The other thing about this head is it actually does stay upright every time. You can try to pull it over on its side, but the least little pull and it straightens right up. You pull that over the fooster too, Bill, like I've seen you do. Look at that. Same thing over rocks. Brush. It's a lot more weedless because now your protection is you have like a tripod all the way around the hook point. So as you're dragging over a limb, your protection with this style jig is right on the hook point. So the weaker you make this, the better it might hook, but you can't fish it through anything. And that's the thing. It's We know that the weed guard's a problem because it's been in print for eons. If you're fishing with a weedless jig, but you're not around much brush to trim the weed guard down to make it softer and it'll hook better. But it also makes it where it hooks everything that you pull across. You're snagged up all the time. So the only way to make this more weedless is to make this stiffer. And the stiffer you make this, then the worse it hooks. But that's not the case with this. Actually, this is stiffer than most weed guards, but as you can see, it hooks way, way better. The other thing that the dual appendage antennas do is it locks the hook in. Once you stick that to a fish, you see the locking force it has on that. Fish can't get rid of it. It's locked in there. Um, it's, you know, it's just the whole thing about this was to make the fisherman a better fishing tool. I'm not trying to sell a, you know, a better paint or a prettier paint or prettier skirt or anything. Of course we have quality products in here. We have powder coated heads. Um, this hook is a production model. And I know it's got this gold hook which people go, oh well that gold throws fish off. But if you stop and think, why do you catch fish with a spinnerbait with gold blades? So the gold hook really doesn't bother anything. But the production models are going to have a uh, black nickel owner hook in them. But later on we may go back to this hook because it's better hooked than anything on the market but it will be in a black nickel instead of the gold. Let's go ahead and hold it right there and come back and talk about that gold hook a little bit.